Hey, this is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. Today we're going to have a recap of some of the weirdest, wildest, and wackiest 12 gauge rounds that we tested over the last couple of years. Unless you're a really devoted follower of this channel, there's a good chance you've never seen these before. Or maybe you got auto unsubscribed or never got the notifications. Now, first up is the Knob Goblin, made out of solid brass and designed by Evan Perry. Weighing in at two ounces or almost 60 grams, this slug is not only heavy, but also pretty long for a 12 gauge slug. The Knob Goblin, no I did not name it, <laughs> is the first projectile we tested that penetrated this lead plate. That's quite an impressive task seeing how a lot of rifle rounds won't penetrate it. Next up, the electrical cable slug. This one's nasty. Much better. Upon impact, the copper wires behave like heavy flechettes and spread apart, ripping through this ballistic gel head. Next, we have the La Bomba slug. Jeez. Whoa. It's big, it's heavy, and it blows up. Now, I believe this one had flash powder in it, and a lot of people will say, it can't be legal, but it is and is below the minimum weight for a destructive device. Every so often I come up with a design. This is called the cheese cutter. I hit it. Oh. I'm ready. Ooh. Oh, Whoa. Jeez. Now the idea of stringing buckshot together on a wire may not be a new idea, but I don't think it's ever been filmed before. I thought it'd be a fun and interesting project to see what it actually looks like, and it was pretty effective. Another idea I had was called the double donut, two lead half ounce rings. Wow. Woo. Here we go. Whoa. Wow. Woo! The double donuts performed exceptionally well through a fully rifled barrel and through a smooth bore, well the performance was acceptable. The two projectiles stayed relatively close together and created two separate wound channels. This increases the knockdown power while it reduces over penetration. The tenderizer came to us as a prototype. It's a six-sided solid copper slug. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. Our testing went really well. The slug proved to be very accurate. Just a really nice precision round. The tests were so impressive that Tim made no design changes and went into full production of these. The projectile expands to about one inch in diameter. Be a great hunting round for lead free areas. Now this is an interesting round from Russia, the Zenith Flechette. 927. On the X. Oh, that one went. These were a slow flying subsonic round, yet it still managed to penetrate the lead plate. Now these were a challenge because if I tried to make them go faster, the tail assembly would get crushed. Here's a weird one for you, the lead ribbon. Exactly what the name suggests. Oh. The lead ribbon round is designed to unravel in flight. What application this would have, I have no idea, but it was an interesting test. The 12 gauge from hell is a big, heavy, solid copper slug. Whoa. 
Now this round would probably be suitable for bear or even cape buffalo. It's a big, brutal round. And I believe he's designing an 8-gauge version, which would require making a custom rifled 8-gauge barrel. Next up, the extremely Russian penetrator. This is a scaled up 69 caliber version of the Lehigh Defense Extreme Penetrator bullet. Made out of solid brass, these things penetrated everything. Wouldn't it be cool if Lehigh Defense started making these? Wow! Wow! The Super King Dragon Breath uses burning titanium, not magnesium like you would think. Now these were a fun round to shoot, but they were also very hazardous. The burning embers were so hot, it ignited wet foliage. We had several fires we had to put out. The Blue Falcon, a very light and very fast projectile. With an average muzzle velocity of over 2100 feet per second, the Blue Falcon was fast, but it had one of the strangest ballistic characteristics we've ever seen. It kind of corkscrewed through the air. It was amazing we were able to hit anything with these things. The 123 battery slug, of course, a viewer suggestion, right? <laughs> now perhaps the worst possible way to recycle a battery the one two three batteries actually perform quite well in order to stabilize these we used a special custom-made sabo and a fully rifled shotgun so they'd fly straight through the air now the batteries all had a small amount of voltage, they certainly weren't fully charged, but nonetheless the impacts were still quite brutal. Now these types of batteries have what I believe is ether, it certainly smells like ether, and we did get some detonation of that on some of the hard targets. The excavator was sent in by a viewer and it was so ugly we didn't give it much of a chance, but boy did these things perform well. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, baby. Oh, you should have tarped it. As far as FBI standards go, the slug performed fantastic on our ballistic gel. It traveled the complete length of our gel block, creating a massive wound cavity, shrapnel, fragments. It was just an ugly, ugly, powerful shot. And this was an important lesson in not judging a book by its cover. The Mach 71 Super Perforator Slug. Oh, man, all those sparks. sparks, yeah. Oh! <laughs> Designed by Kyle from the country of Wales, yes, Wales is a country, the Mach 71 not only looked cool, but it performed outstanding. And I'm really excited because Kyle is supposed to be sending us another set of slugs pretty soon. Some days the tests are frustrating and grueling, other days they are absolutely fun and pleasurable. This was one of those days. The 73 caliber Ferro Fury. Now the Ferro Fury 
video, the original video, uh, never gained any traction. I think uh, YouTube put the kibosh on this one. Now, the slug uses a large ferrocerium rod in the core, and upon impact on aluminum or steel, it created a huge shower of sparks. It was very impressive. And yeah, I even worked on the lead plate. Now, with the high speed camera, I closed down the aperture to darken things up a little bit. And I think a lot of the comments on our original video were like, how come you didn't shoot them at night? Well, you can't operate the high-speed camera at night, and they won't let us shoot out there at night. How's that? Wow. Now, the Ferro Fury is a very heavy slug, and the recoil was very strong. But they were a lot of fun to shoot and relatively accurate, and that's always a good thing. We've tested a lot of things that just are not very accurate, and that's not fun. And of course, the other thing that made it a lot of fun is we had Danny, Greg, and Brianna all out at the same time filming together. That was a first, and a last. And it's too bad a lot of people never saw this video. And finally we have the subsonic dumbbell. Now this is a very bittersweet video because this is the very last video that Danny shot for me and with me. Now it was a very hot day, it was about 100 degrees out and we had been out there for a couple hours and both of us were feeling the heat. But Danny was feeling really weak after the shoot and I thought it was just, you know, the heat but it was more than that and it was shortly after this that he passed away unfortunately but i just want to say that danny was a very important part of this channel he was very helpful and he was always available to help out to film stuff it was rare that he couldn't make it in fact all the way back here and here we go Wow. Whoa. Oh. Now the point of this test was to show our viewers who think that targets need to be strapped down in order to penetrate them, don't really need to be strapped down. That big, fat, heavy slug just went right through that first roll of toilet paper, through the second and through the third, and that first roll never really even moved. Now it takes a lot of force to punch a, a large hole like that in thousands of uh, layers of toilet paper. So it, it, it just kind of blows my mind. I don't know if you appreciate it, but it really is a good demonstration of physics, how the mass of the toilet paper which is about seven ounces resists movement enough that it can uh, allow a slug to pass through it without moving anyway i hope you enjoyed this video of the weird wacky and wild rounds we shot over the last couple years and for all of you folks that have donated blood which was danny's last request he i asked him what he needed what would help him and all he asked for was to have people donate blood and it I really want to thank everyone who has done that. It means a lot to all the people going through cancer treatment and all that. Um, thank you, and we'll see you next time.